In today's episode of Problem Solved Woodworking, we're going to be creating a custom size barn rustic style picture frame for a customer. Stay tuned for the video to see how it's done, but also in the link down below, you'll find a free set of plans for this and where the inspiration for these picture frames came from and the instructions that I went off of to create them. For this project, we're going to be using one by threes, and these are three quarter inch thick, by two and a half inches wide, and that will give us a um, barn style slat to this. It would be cheaper with as many of these we'll use the, to buy thicker pieces of wood or wider pieces of wood and just run them across the table saw, but we don't want to join these because we don't want the edges to butt up perfectly. We do want them to line up as best we can, but we don't want it exactly perfect so we can give that rustic barn style feel. The outer pieces of the um, frame are 38 and 13 16 for this particular project that I'm working on. And so I'm gonna go ahead and mark that out. Um, as I'm building a new miter stall cabinet here, I'm gonna go ahead and use it even though it's not finished. Um, that video will be coming here shortly. Uh, I don't have my extended fences up, otherwise I would suggest putting a stop block up to make sure they are exactly the same each time. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that out and give that a cut right now. Now the outer edge of this requires two full pieces on the outside and two pieces that will be routed out for the picture actually to sit into and you'll see this when it's finished. So I need to actually cut four of these that are 38 and 13 sixteenths long. For the next part of the frame that we need to cut out, we need to cut out the top and the bottom pieces, which are four and a half inches tall uh, when they're laid out this way for the frame and for the project that I'm currently working on here. I could set up a stop block and just use my miter saw and just keep pressing those out quickly. But as I'm finishing up this new miter saw cart, um, I do not currently have dust collection set up on this. So it's every time I'm using it, it is making a mess everywhere. And I, try to, I wanna try and limit that as much as possible. So I've decided to switch over to my table saw. And what I've done is I've set up the blade to make sure that I get that four and a half inch cut. But to do that and make sure I get it accurate, I need to use both my miter gauge and my fence. And when you use the both together as you're going across the table saw, that can cause the wood to bind as you're cutting. And that will absolutely cause kickback and it's a very unsafe situation. To, so to account for this, I've put in a piece of plywood here and added that thickness to my measurement from the blade to the fence. And so this piece of plywood is 11 16 wide and I need this four and a half inches long. So I add those together and I get five and three sixteenths. So this gap between the blade and my fence is five and three sixteenths. So as I'm going along and I set this piece of wood up, I put it right up against the piece of plywood. And as I get beyond the plywood, now I've got a gap between my piece of wood and my fence, but I still have that four and a half inch measurement between my blade and the end of the piece of wood. So this is a very safe, very accurate way to cut pieces of wood and making sure that you get consistent pieces over and over. So let's go ahead and get cutting these. We have 22 that we need to cut for this project. So I'm looking at the table for this particular dado stack and I need the gap for the frame or the picture to fit in to be an inch and a quarter um, on this because there's an inch and a quarter going all the way around. And so if I match this up and say split that difference that I'll run it through in two passes, 
I can do this in five eighths because five eighths and five eighths uh, is an inch and a quarter. And this says I need two blades, two chippers, no spacers and no shims. And so I'll do two blades, two chippers, and we'll see how that works out. For my birthday um, last year, my wife got me these Craig height, um, I don't know what you call them, but uh, height gauges that you can use on a router bit or a table saw. And you can set these down, run them across your blade and get an exact measurement. Okay, so for these picture frames, we're gonna have double strength glass, which is an eighth inch thick. We're gonna have the picture itself fitting inside of that. And then we are going to have the backer board, which is an eighth inch thick. And then we are going to have the points that allow the customer to um, push the metal pins down to hold the picture frame in. If we add eighth, 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 assuming an eighth for the picture, we're at three eighths of an inch. We have to keep in mind that this is only three quarters of an inch thick. So I am comfortable going down to a half an inch. We'll test that out and make sure it's still structurally safe. Um, That'll leave a quarter inch of a bite to hold everything in. Um, so we'll cut out a half an inch on this and we'll need to measure the height of these blades to an eighth of an inch. Or excuse me, a half of an inch. And so the way these work, again, they have the cutout for the height that you're gonna use. Set them right across the blade and across your table. And you can lower it until Get it just right. Okay, I think we got it. Okay, so for our first pass, because again, we have to do this in two passes. This is four and a half inches wide, and we want to take off five eighths before we start, or right at the end. Okay, so we're going to take off four and a half minus five eighths to get our fence measurement, and so that'll take us down to three and seven eighths. And so, move our fence over to three and seven eighths. We'll double check the measurement here, make sure. And again, this is where you have a brain fart and realize that your blade width is not an eighth of an inch as your um, fence measurement is set up for. So you'll need to scoot this over to three and seven eighths. So before we get started, you need to put your zero clearance insert in if you have one. Um, if you don't, you absolutely need to make one. This is a very quick crude one that I have made in the past. I absolutely need to make a new one um, so that it sits a little smoother, but this will do the job for me. Um, I'm just going to make sure now that I'm using a new dado stack that this is deep enough. Um, and so I am going to go ahead, even though I got that fence just set, I'm going to go ahead and scoot that over, set that right over top of this to make sure that it's cut deep enough and we'll reset everything again.
once you've got the tones of the stain the way you'd like them, whether it be dark or light, um, this is what I did. I just laid it out to make sure that it looked exactly the way that I had wanted. I forgot to hit the record button on my camera during this process, but the final assembly stage after staining the wood and getting it to the tones that you'd like is to glue the boards together. And what I did on the back is I cut two two inch pieces of oak. I used a hardwood um, to make sure that it was structurally sound and less prone to bending. And I glued all the little pieces together. Then I glued the two inch um, piece of backer strips on the back and then I brad nailed it together. Once I was finished with that, I put it in some clamps with some call boards to make sure that it wouldn't bend with so many little pieces. And I let that sit and cure for 48 hours. And then once that time had passed, I added three metal hangers to the back to make sure that it could support the weight of this size of frame. The absolute final step in this process is to actually add the picture frame points. And those are the metal tabs that you can bend back to add your picture to the, the frame itself. And so I used an eighth inch piece of backer board to simulate the size of the glass. And then I put a folded up piece of paper in there to act like the thickness of whatever picture or canvas may be inserted in the frame. And then I stuck the points in to make sure that there was plenty of room for everything. And then I tested the points just to make sure that they've gone in far enough and would hold over time. This is what the final frame looks like once it's fully assembled, minus the glass and the picture that will go inside of it. I did take the time to cut out a hanging template for the customer so that they could just hang it up on the wall and mark where the screw holes should go. And then the final stage, once that was complete, was to go ahead and wrap it up in the bubble wrap just to make sure it was secure for the customer and package it up and send it on its way. I do believe in getting credit where credit is due. And I'd like you to, when you get a chance, visit jennakateathome.com. This is a website where I got the inspiration for these frames. Her version of the frames look very similar. Instead of gluing them together, um, she staples them together and just uses straight pieces of board, puts a backer paper on, and then just sticks the pictures up. And they look fantastic. I took her layout method of the way the barnwood looks and the skinnier styles on the barnwood frames. And then I also took her method of staining the frames to give them that old rustic beat up look. Further, I even took a grinder and some hammers and screwdrivers and stuff to put some dents in the wood to make it look aged and more rustic. But I want to give her credit for the style and the look of these frames because it was all her idea. And I just want to make sure that um, you guys give her a shout out, check out her webpage, look her up on social media because uh, the frames do look great. And what I built is very much based on what she had developed on her website. And I'll put a link down in the description below. If you like these frames and you want to get free plans um, for the way that I have built them, you can visit my website down below. If you uh, would, please like or subscribe to my channel. That helps keep it going. And we'll see you in the next video.